The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. Sweetheart, write this down. Oh, yes, Sam. I have pencil and paper ready. Ingredients, colon. Punctuation or ingredients, Sam? Both. Well, what is it, Sam? A recipe. One pound of fennel. Oh, that's liquid measure, Sam. You put that in later. Cross out funnel? Not funnel, fennel. It is not liquid. It grows at fairly pines. It's fairly what, Sam? One road of St. John's wart. Whose wart? Not wart, wart. Oh, what? Don't interrupt. Some uh, new size, a couple pounds ought to be enough. One ounce of bat's wool, one adder fork, that is not a utensil, one fillet of fenny snake, some lizard's legs, one hemlock root digged in the dark. Directions. In the poisoned entrails throw, toad that under cold stone days and nights has to be won. And if anyone drops in for trick or treat, Effie, leave him have it. Oh, Sam, now I get it. Halloween. It's a witch's brew. <laughs> you were only fooling. That's what you think, sweetheart. Get out your cauldron, your poison pen, and your book of malefactions. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the fairly bright caper, or I should have stood in bed and ducked for apples. <laughs> Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Are they saying this about you? There goes somebody who's really well-groomed, and that can go for every member of your family if they spruce up each day with Wild Root Cream Oil. America's favorite hair tonic. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, removes loose dandruff. If your family hasn't tried it, get Wild Root Cream Oil in the new 25-cent bottle. You'll see why Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic is, again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. <laughs> Dying. Oh, no, it's only two devils that blow through a murderer's bones to and fro in the ghost's moonshine. Oh, oh Sam, take off that ridiculous mask. <sighs> you look about as much like a demon. As a demon, check. Uh, fly your broom into the adjoining office, sister, and we'll weave a few spells. Uh, date, uh, Effie. Yes, Sam. What is this thing on my desk? Looks like a pumpkin. It is a pumpkin. I made it this afternoon. Here, I'll light it. Well, isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Eyes and nose and mouth. Looks like Lieutenant Dundee of Homicide. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you. Well, I guess everyone knows it's Halloween, even if they don't listen to the radio. Shall we? We shall. Uh, date, All Hallows' Eve, 1948, to Hillary Bright, Esquire, number 13, Black Place, City, from Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the Fairly Bright Caper. It was a fairly bright afternoon for the fog-bound Bay Area. There was no frost upon the pumpkin. In fact, as yet, no pumpkin. But I did see a black cat and several attracted wolf girls in broomstick skirts during the bus ride down the peninsula to your client's ancestral estate, Fairly Pines. A bat flew out of a hollow tree as I mushed up a road through some pine woods to the house. In the gathering dusk, I also observed the toad, a lizard, and a hooty owl, which, if memory serves, are staple ingredients for a witch's brew. Then I observed, hobbling out of the forest, an authentic hag. She was wearing a dusty black robe, a peaked black hat, and her matted gray hair coiled serpent-like around her evil countenance. She leaned on a gnarled staff of hemlock, fixed me with her yellow, glittering eyes, and said, Hello, kiddo. Yes, am Which way's the house? Which house? Fairly fine. Lost my bearings, I did. I was looking for some fennel. Oh. I got the back wall right enough and newt's legs. Couldn't find no adders, folks. But reckon this here copperhead will do the trick. 
Uh, what are you going to do with all that stuff? It's for the brew. I'm the witch I hired for tonight. Name's Gudge. Born Sophia, but of course I don't have no Christian name anymore since I sold out to old scratch. Meet me down on my price, he did too. Look at that wart on my nose. What nose? Huh? Uh, the house is up that way. Mind if I walk along with you, pretty boy? I don't like girls. Huh? Uh, no, not at all, uh, ma'am. No need to be afeard. With a strong GP there obeying me, I'll be lucky if I give him a whiff of brimstone. Uh, not so close, please. But I did promise one manifestation and the scream of a soul in torment is the witching hour. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, sir. Uh, where do I find Mr. Hillary Bright? Oh, you're the detective, is Spade? Right. Oh, well, I'm Homer Langdon, attorney for the Fairley State. Uh, come along, I'll take you to him. Sorry for that challenge just now. Been hearing strange noises around the grounds. You notice anything peculiar as you came up the road? Uh, well, there was an old lady. I used the term loosely. Looking for fennel? Yeah. Uh, that's the witch. Mr. Bright hired her for the party tonight. Takes her work kind of seriously, doesn't she? Well, you know how it is. Seasonal work. What does she do between Halloweens? Claims she hibernates. Mommy! Oh, God, Ophelia. Mommy! This is fairly spade. She's uh, eccentric. Don't let her know. Check. Oh, here I am, Homer. What was it you wanted? Oh, it's the man from the catering. No, Ophelia. This is Mr. Spade. The detective that Mr. Bright employed. Oh, well, about that recipe for the aspic. Cook says she's never heard of putting fennel and lizard's claws in a tomato aspic. And Mr. Bright says hemlock is poison. Uh, you've got it mixed up, Ophelia. That's the recipe for the witch's brew. Well, anyway, the grocer says he doesn't stop them, so you'll have to garnish it with parsley. Uh, uh, Ophelia, he's not the caterer. He's the detective. Oh, well, keep your eye on those pumpkins. Mice, you know. Mice? You know, mice. Pumpkins? Where is that witch? I've got to tell her about the party. Oh, witch! Witch! Where are you? <sighs> Sad case, but harmless. Shall we go in? Yeah. Now, uh, what's his jawbone, Wilma? So oh, you've already broken his neck. Oh, why don't you hire an assistant? I don't like hanging him in the house anyway. We we don't even know who he is. What are they up to now? Halloween comes with once a year. Oh, it's a skeleton, part of the decoration. Uh, Hillary. Oh, yes, Omar. I couldn't find the witch, but here's the detective. Ah, oh, well, you can have the witch. I'll take him. Oh, watch what you're doing, Wilma. The ladder. Oh, sorry. Uh, <sighs> this just about completes the arrangements. Oh, this is Miss Wilma Fairley, for whom I'm managing this nauseous ball, uh, Sam Spade. Hillary. Is that any way to speak about a girl's fifth engagement party? Uh, forgive me if I'm guilty of understatement. Oh, fix that wire, Wilma. The top of Frankenstein's head's caving in. And look at that. The bolts are coming out of his neck already. Oh, well, come along, Spade. And I'll tell you how you fit into this mess. See you at the party, Sam. Oh, in here, Spade. Privacy. I uh, don't think we're quite alone, are uh, we? Ninety-nine percent. This is fairly fiancé number five. Ralph Cram by name. Oh, wake up, Ralph. Oh, uh, don't bother. He uh, started the party a little early? Mm, before lunch. But can you blame him? <laughs> if I weren't a teetotaler, I'd be out staggering around the woods with, with that witch. Uh-huh. Now, uh, what exactly is my assignment, Mr. Bright? I want you to be present at this miserable party tonight and pretend to have a good time. Why don't you hire an actor? <laughs> this is a new kind of masquerade ball. Even I have a unique problem here. A Halloween party combined with a party announcing the engagement of a socially prominent young woman. <laughs> well, naturally, the press will be on hand. They always are at my parties. But I doubt if any of the invited guests will show up. That's where you come in. You are one of the uninvited guests. I don't get it. Well, it's very simply this. I have a reputation to maintain. I'm sure you have better things to do than read the society page, so I'll, I, I'll explain. I believe some ill-informed columnists have referred to me as the male Elsa Maxwell. That's not true. She is the male Hillary Bright. Uh, female, that is. Uh, anyway, you're a professional party giver, is that it? Uh, exactly. What's the matter with Wilma? Why won't anybody come to her party? Because everyone on the guest list is either a relative or a friend of some poor swain she has jilted on the very steps of the altar. Oh, now I get it. Exactly. Now, as to the party. Masquerade. Natch. What else can you have on Halloween? Figures. Yes. 
If anyone came, they'd probably be dressed as witches or pumpkins, which is dull enough in itself. Quite so. But the fairies and their immediate circle will undoubtedly trot out their moth-eaten Beaux Arts costumes. Old Langdon as Louis the Fourteenth. Wilma and her mother trying to look like Greek goddesses and some old drapes from a Fanchon and Marco idea. What about the boyfriend here? Well, you can see how hideous it's all going to be. And Life magazine has promised to cover it. Well, I simply had to do something. Now, what about the boyfriend? I think it's the party idea of the year. Twenty uninvited guests who will come as themselves. Uh, who's my date, the witch? Oh, isn't she priceless? You know, I thought of burning her at the stake as the grand climax of the evening. I've got matches. No, I decided against it. It's too messy. Well, it sounds like loads of fun, Mr. Bright, but I'm afraid you called the wrong detective. Now, Go wait out. a minute, please. Hear me out. Now, there's method in my madness. I believe I mentioned twenty uninvited guests. Who are coming as themselves, yes. Exactly. Well, I've gone to a great deal of trouble and expense getting together a really colorful group. All authentic types. A gangster, a shrimp fisherman, a swami, three bubble dancers, a gypsy, hmm? a paroled axe murderer, a sand hog. Oh, that reminds me, I must see whether the blubber arrived for that Eskimo they're flying down from Nome. Yeah, well... Well, What uh, I'm getting at, Spade, is that with a collection of people like that, well, anything might happen. Yeah, yeah, well, why don't you invite the uh, local police force? Oh, they're coming, in costume, of course. Good, then you won't need me. Besides, I get $800 a day in expenses. Mr. Spade, at the last party our local chief of police attended, the guests were held up and robbed at $50,000 worth of jewels, including the chief's gold bag. So, you see, we do need you. to sleep, Ralph. It's only the guests arriving. I get a thousand dollars. You were right. You did need a detective. In fact, you could have used several of us. First, the pickpocket you had invited lifted the police chief's wallet. The axe murderer chased the witch up a tree. And the gangster and the cowboy tried to shoot it out over one of the bubble dancers. After I'd foiled a safe cracker in the act of blowing the vault in the library, things quieted down and everybody formed a circle around a, a bonfire. All right, quiet, please. Quiet, everyone. Quiet. Mrs. Fairley has a very important announcement to make. Ophelia? She was here just a few moments ago. Well, have you seen her around, Langdon? A few minutes ago. She said she had a headache and went upstairs to get the master. Sam, I'm worried about Mother. Would you mind going upstairs to see what she's up to? She's been behaving so strangely tonight. She's been behaving strangely. Uh, sure. Uh, well, no, I'll be right well, back. Come along. Let's get on with it. A witch. Uh-huh. You, you stand over here. Yes? No, no, no. Bring your broom. <laughs> That's it. And don't look so pleasant. You're supposed to be evil. <laughs> Beware. Those not wearing toe vein is subject to wart. There's evil in this place tonight. Blood on the stone. Blood in the barn. <laughs> I hated to miss the manifestation, and I hoped I'd get back in time for the scream of the soul in torment the witch had promised earlier in the evening. I cased the rooms on the second floor. Wilma's fiancé, Ralph Cram, was in one of them asleep. Ophelia wasn't in any of them. But in one of the bedrooms, I found something that puzzled me. A rope made out of bed sheets dangled out of the window, but the window was closed. I walked over and opened it. The witch was still at it. I couldn't see the merry little group around the bonfire, but where the firelight glowed against the tree trunks at the edge of the woods, I saw a white-robed figure crouching in the shadows. Then I heard it. It's Wilma, Sage. He's dead. Somebody shot her. She was sprawled on her face at the foot of a big pine tree at the edge of the clearing. A single slug had entered her body just below her left shoulder blade. If this was part of Mr. Bright's Halloween production, I thought he'd overdone it just a little, because she was dead. As nearly as I could reconstruct it, Wilma had been standing outside the circle of people grouped around the fire as if somebody in the woods had called to her and she'd left the group to investigate. She'd been facing the fire when she was shot. And what about the two shots that had missed her? If the killer had been aiming at her and missed, he couldn't have avoided hitting somebody else in the crowd. I went back to the house to check the guests. All there, unwounded and accounted for, except the witch. According to the local chief of police, it was rapidly turning into a toad. She had flown away on a broom. I checked my nose for warts. The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective... 
Sam Spade. Now, here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead, socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. Remember, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil contains lanolin. It grooms the hair naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. So, if you want your hair to be more attractive than ever before, get the generous new 25-cent size of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's leading hair tonic, on sale at all drug and toilet goods counters. It's also available in larger economy bottles and the handy new tube. Get Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. Now, back to the fairly bright caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. By dawn the next morning, Aloysius Becker, boy police chief, still hadn't sweated anything out of his 20-odd suspects, but yawns. The family lawyer, Langdon, had an old gun permit. No gun. Then he canvassed the town for Wilma's 18 jilted suitors. They were all alibied by their wives and children, which knocked that angle out. She carried no insurance. Nobody stood to gain anything financially by her death. And nobody but you, Mr. Bright, actively disliked her. About then, Chief Becker put Ophelia back on the griddle. Now, look here, Mrs. Fairley. You still aren't coming clean with us. Clean? Oh, the ashtrays. I'll call the maid. Come back here. Yes, Chief Becker. Now, sit down, Mrs. Fairley. Now, let's go over the part of your story where we found the bed sheets hanging out your window. Yes. Why did you tie the bed sheets together and hang them out the window? For a rope. So, you admit that you used that rope to snake out. I did no such thing. I always go out that way at night. And you admit that... Uh... <clears throat> oh, I give up. Uh, Mrs. Fairley. Oh, it's you, Mr. Spade. I want to thank you for guarding the pumpkin so well. I didn't see a mouse all evening. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Fairley. I only did what... Uh... Oh, why is Chief Becker so angry? I think what's worrying him, Mrs. Fairley, is why you closed the window behind you when you went out on your rope. So no one would know. Wilma worries about me. You won't tell her. Ah, uh, it's as plain as a nose on your face what she's doing. Working up to an, an insanity plea. Ingenious theory, Chief, but look, uh, can I talk to you a minute outside? Yeah, could use a little air. Keep them all here, Monahan. Look, uh, Chief, why don't you lay off that poor old dame? She's huh. too vague, disorganized. It's yeah. like a marksman. The way the wound was, no point of exit. Just punch at the wall of the heart and stop. The low velocity impact. Sure. A what? It had been fired from about the maximum range of the thirty-eight pistol. He'd have to figure on the drop in trajectory as the bullet slowed down. It was either a trick shot or one that just connected accidentally. By the way, we only have your word for it that you were upstairs in the house when those shots were fired. You carry a thirty-eight, don't you, Spade? What kind of gun do you carry, Chief? Uh, yes. Well, we'd better wait till Ballistic sends back the report on the slug. Gosh, if we could only figure out where she hid the gun. Uh, don't look now, Chief, but that witch is back again. What? Pretty boy! Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you, Muckles. You're going to have a good deal of explaining to do, lady. Why did you fly away like that last night? I had to see to my cauldron. A good thing I did, too. Look what I found in it. No wonder my manifestation didn't work. Base metal in my brew. Hmm. 38 caliber, too. Three bullets fired. Gee, that settles it. You're under arrest. Oh, me? Yes. But uh, no, her. Oh, no, you don't. I'll put a spell on you, I will. I'll turn you into a toad. Look, Chief, where's that gun permit you took out of Langdon's room? Oh, I forgot. I forgot about that. Here, it's in my pocket. Let's see that serial number. Well? They match. It's Langdon's gun. Boy, oh, boy. Then it's settled. That's what you think, boy, oh, boy. Don't forget, he's a lawyer. <laughs> I headed for the woods. I found the spot where I'd seen the figure in white crouching just before the shots were fired. A little way back in the woods, I found footprints. French heels, short, mincing stride. 
Following along behind them was another set, flat soles, long, manly stride. The mannish footprints followed the feminine footprints almost to the clearing and then stopped. The feminine footprints went on straight to the spot where Wilma had fallen. I knew that no woman had been over this trail since the murder except the witch, who probably had cloven hoofs. Her cauldron had vanished, but the fire was still smoldering. I kicked through the ashes. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I found it. I raked it out with a stick and prodded it. The blackened outer layers crumbled away. It had been a raging bonfire, but there were a few things harder to burn than a telephone book. The middle pages were yellowed from the heat and seared around the edges, but they were still intact. There was a hole punched in the middle of each page. Feminine footprints right up to the X that marked the spot in the phone book through which a bullet had been fired. I had a hunch the ballistics report would prove that Langdon's gun did not fire the fatal bullet. I was right, but for the wrong reason. You can't get around it, Chief. Ballistics don't lie. You can see here. You don't even need a magnifying glass. Take a look, there. Uh, don't have my glasses. Well, you ought to be able to feel it. Two big ridges on the test slug. The other one's almost smooth. Rust pits wouldn't make a ridge like that, would they? No, we figure they must have used a faulty cutter at the factory when they rifled the barrel. Well, that settles it. That and those women's footprints and that phone book all point to Mrs. Fairley. What's about a phone book? Whoever shot her fired the slug through a phone book to make it look like a long-range job. It was a low-velocity hit, all right, but it was tearing through that phone book that slowed it down. That proves the killer didn't have to be a marksman. Stood right next to it. <laughs> What's so funny? This picture in the morning paper, you and those bubble dancers, Chief. <laughs> uh, let me see that. Why, that's libelous. It's more than that. Huh? They're in the background, Langdon and Mrs. Fairley. What about them? Their shoes. Langdon's dressed as Louis the Fourteenth, French heels. Mrs. Fairley and that Greek goddess get up, sandals, flat heels. It's Langdon's gun, then it's not Langdon's gun. It's a long range shot, then it's through a seed catalog. Phone book. Now it's a man in woman's shoes, an attorney at that. Monahan, get me some fingerprints, something I can work with. <laughs> I didn't blame the chief. My somersaulting clues were getting me dizzy, too. So far, Langdon, like the good lawyer he was, had kept his mouth shut, which meant nothing one way or the other. That was smart. But he disposed of his gun by throwing it in the witch's cauldron, which was stupid. A, because it was sure to be found, and B, because there was no reason for hiding it anyway. But two stupid sometimes make us smart. If he wanted it to be found, he must have had a story ready in case he had to talk. If I were in that spot, my story would have been that I fired those shots into the woods after the fleeing killer. But I didn't know how I would explain the fact that only three shots were heard, one of which killed Wilma. Then I thought of those two ridges on that test slug. Two ridges, two shots into the woods. This time, I did know what I was looking for. They were buried deep in the soft trunk of a pine tree near the ground. I dropped to my knees and dug. I got the first one out and was looking at it. It was a misshapen hunk of worthless lead. Something embedded in the side of it glittered in the sun like a diamond. In fact, it was a diamond. And it stopped glittering. Something behind me had come between it and the sun. I flopped on my side and rolled over. I grabbed his legs and tripped him. Then I saw his face. It was Langdon. I was halfway to my feet when his foot caught me where it hurt and my legs doubled up. I tried to keep moving and get my gun out at the same time. He was on his feet again before I was, so I fired without aiming from flat on my back. He only scorched his coat, but it stopped him a second. He swung his gun up, and I got ready to jump him. But I didn't have to. A pointed black hat rose up out of the brush behind him. Something flashed in the sun, and he collapsed. <laughs> Put a spell on him, I did. With this here magic wand. Blown into it to you, Sonny. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Witch. God to the handle, son, which is my profession. <sighs> Uh, boy, that was a close call. Put the cuffs on him, Monahan. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, no, Monahan, not Spade. Langdon there. Been following him since I found out he was wearing women's shoes. Well, that settled it, eh, Spade? Yeah, but you'll need this. What is it? A jeweled bullet. A slug with a diamond set in it. Come on, here. It's Only the master like clue of this oh. caper. Oh, yeah, the master clue. Uh, you better come along, too, lady, for questioning. What? We'll book her for a vagrancy if we need it. Oh, no, you don't. I'll turn you into a toad. You don't believe me, do you? Hoppy toad, hoppy toad, warty and green. <laughs> Feel anything? <clears throat> well, on, on second thought, I reckon she's harmless, poor old soul. Soul, indeed. Ain't got any. I sold out to old Scratch 30 years ago, come next Halloween. <laughs> See you then, Sonny. Go home and gargle. 
End of report. But, Sam, what was the significance of the jewel bullet? Hmm? Oh, well, after he uh, shot Wilma, Langdon fired two shots into the woods, remember? Yes. Those two bullets had diamond insets so placed that they would gouge the inside of the gun barrel. All bullets fired from the gun thereafter would have markings different from the one fired into Wilma's body. Oh! He was wrong, of course, but it was noble of him to want to cover up for poor Mrs. Fairley. What for, Abby? Well, she killed her dog, of course, because she was just out of patience with her, getting engaged and unengaged all the time till they hadn't a friend in the world. Yes, sir. That was the motive, wasn't it, Sam? Uh, that's fairly bright, sweetheart, except that Mrs. Fairley did not kill her daughter. <gasps> Langdon did. She mean, she was his daughter, too, by a previous marriage? Go take that up, sweetheart, before I turn you into a toad. <laughs> And now, listen to this. For here's a good tip. Spruce up right, spruce up now with Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, removes loose dandruff. Get the 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle or the large economy size and ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. Well, here it is, Sam. Of course, you know best, but Mrs. Sally was the only one with a motive. And then Mr. Bright was secretly in love with her and, and wanted to marry her himself. So he killed her. That was Sally Bright. Oh, her fiancé. What happened to him? He woke up and went home. Oh, well, I guess he didn't have a motive. Pay attention, sweetheart. Langdon, as trustee of the Fairley estate, had embezzled large sums of money, which he would have to account for under the community property law if she got married. She got married. He had already broken up many of her romances, but when the old lady went soft in the head, he decided to end the danger once and for all. He could explain matters any way he wanted to, and there'd be nobody to contradict him. Are you, uh, listening up? Hmm. Sam, what does she do between Halloween? The witch? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's the uh, squeak in the door on Inner Sanctum. Oh, Sam. You made the joke too small. <laughs> well, good night, Sam. Good night, Sam. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Dove. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Dowd. Musical direction by Lud Gluskin with score composed by Renee Garrigan. Join us again next Sunday when author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie, to keep your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie, it's made with Susan Lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie, start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie, keeping all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy. Get Wild Root right away. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System.